1932, Franklin Roosevelt appointed my grandfather, Joseph Kennedy, to run his brand new Securities and Exchange Commission. My grandfather had been a stock manipulator on Wall Street, and FDR wanted a, a chairman who understood the stock market inside and out as the only person who could reform it. In a similar vein, Nicole will stand up to Silicon Valley, which she knows inside and out. And she's going to stand up to Wall Street, to the big banks, the larcenous K Street lobbyists, the regulatory czars, the unbridled central bank money printers, the crony capitalists, and all of the other people who have turned our country from a democracy into a corporate kleptocracy. These are the people. Their cupidity drives our corrupt campaign finance system, which is nothing more than a system of legalized bribery. This is a system that has put agency capture on steroids and made our government regulators sock puppets for the industries that they're supposed to regulate. The corrupt merger of state and corporate power now straddles our nation's capital like a mythical harpy sucking the economic, social, and moral vitality out of the nation's polity of free citizens, gorging itself on the bleaching bones of the American middle class. Nicole is going to help me free our country from that predatory cabal. Our independent run for the presidency is finally going to bring down the Democratic and Republican duopoly. That, that gave us this ruinous debt, chronic disease, endless wars, lockdowns, mandates, agency capture, and the same Trump-Biden uniparty that has captured and appropriated democracy and turned it over to BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, and the other corporate donors. Nicole Shanahan will help me rally support for our revolution against the uniparty rule from both ends of the right and left political spectrum. Now let me tell you what Nicole and I are up against and what we need to do to win and how we're going to do it. The New York Times this week published an article estimating that the Democratic Party war chest will ultimately be, which is 1.1 billion today, already, the largest in the history of any political party. Within a few months, it's going to be $3 billion. And the Democratic Party is not going to use that war chest to amplify President Biden's voice is using it to stop its opponents from getting on the ballot and to turn Americans against each other and, in, in, and inundate us with fear. Incidentally, the Republican Party will raise about the same amount. Does anybody here think that these big money donors who are giving all that money are acting out of a patriotic impulse? Do you think they're acting out of a humanitarian impulse? No, of course they're not. For them, this is an investment, and they expect a return on that investment, and they expect a very, very big return. The campaign finance system has transformed our government from a model democracy into a, into a corporate kleptocracy. So we're up against power powerful, this campaign is up against the most powerful financial interest in history. We also face a determined campaign to keep us off the ballot by fair means or foul. Evidently, the Democrats have little faith in their candidates' ability to win in the old-fashioned way at the voting booth. 
we are going to overcome these financial and legal challenges. But I want to talk about another obstacle that's even more important. It's the obstacle of cynicism. It's the obstacle of fear. It's the deeply ingrained habit of voting for someone you have little passion for because he is the lesser of two evils. Because you are so afraid that the other guy will win. Well, don't you want to vote for someone this time?